Joseph thrown out of his own camp by his own brethren and made a slave in Egypt for like ever in a day and struggled to have a hard time. And then he was accused by Potiphar's wife of attempted rape. And then there was, um, who is this? Give me more. Like all the saints of the living God, all the apostles of Jesus Christ were martyred except for john at patmos and even john at patmos i've already told you the story about john at patmos he was teaching at ephesus they did not like him try to boil him like a maguena in some oil that did not work and then they exiled him to patmos yeah i mean uh, hannah was actually being derided by penina uh mordecai was being perpetually pursued by haman for death even though he died at the very gallows that um, um haman that is that he set apart for mordecai daniel in the lion's den shadrach meshach and abednego in the fire i could go on and 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 on disciples be persecuted like rolling stones we can't control the soul of God and spirit flowing in us Ooh yeah Job be all and end all of the baddest example in the game dude lost everything I mean everything and then his wife went and said to him will you still maintain your integrity why don't you just curse God and die when he was out just scraping his body from sores all over them with pottery I mean do I need to go on? Of course, I mean, how about we don't forget the pinnacle and the beal and, and, and all of a cornerstone? Christ himself, he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with many griefs. They, they hated him without cause, and then he was killed. However, God resurrected, hallelujah, and now we have redemption because he died and did not stay dead. That's what's good. Mm. I could find more and more and more and more. Micaiah was thrown in prison and made to eat meager portions of bread and water. More and more and more and more. Turn of the living God out to be getting given some deadbeat hard times. So what are you talking about when you say that God would never abandon his child like this? I haven't been abandoned. I've been told to count the cost of being a disciple. I've done just that. And this year, which I'm experiencing, typical. I am just going through that which many Christians across the world go through. The sorrow here that I'm actually rather dealing with is the fact that I come from South Africa. And the South African church is fluffy. Okay, y'all don't know what it's like to truly be a child of the living God. You don't know that there are countries where it's really rough to be a saint. So you don't have to make a profession of faith just for fun, right? Like when you're in Yemen. Yeah, like when you are sitting in, in, in Pakistan or India, when you are just hanging out in the persecuting states of Nigeria, you don't just say, I'm a Christian very easily. So when you are actually professing Christ on your tongue, chances are you're legit, you're the real deal. In North Korea, you don't just say, I'm Christian, unless you're actually Christian, because it's heavily disincentivized to be one. But you're living in cushy South Africa, where apparently, allegedly, you're living in cushy South Africa where apparently, allegedly, God has, a for, has forsaken a person when they have no job, when they're unemployed. While there are prisoners chilling, languishing in prison camps in North Korea, facing death from starvation. But girl, we gotta go commit suicide because she doesn't have a job. Even though frankly, I need to lose some weight. If I wanted, I could become obese. That's how much food I got. Yeah, there are Christians out here literally passing away from malnutrition across the world. And I am forsaken by God because of having no job, despite having shelter, despite having internet access 24 hours a day, despite having solar panels for crying out loud, while the rest of y'all out should be suffering with load shedding from South Africa proper. I've got so many luxuries in comparison to so many of the persecuted church across the world that I am without excuse to dive into a casket and kill myself. And I'm also without excuse to grovel, groan and moan and grunt at God when there are, like I said, prison camped, incarcerated Christians in North Korea that are guaranteed to pass away in that state. Ain't nobody coming for them. They will have to just say like Stephen as they are passing away, into your hands I commit my spirit. Nobody is coming for them. And I'm out here languishing over a little bit of unemployment. Relax, your Christianity is fluffy. And those of y'all that live in countries like South Africa, where everybody's nice and spoiled, they're like a nice little brat. That's what's good. Y'all are about to be handled by the tribulation. You are going to know what Christianity really entails. You are going to know what Christians went through in the Colosseum, out you getting mauled away by lions while people watched. You are going to know what it's like to be a gladiator. You are going to know what it's like to be reviled, thrown out the synagogues. You are going to know what it's like to have your own family member hand you over to be killed, even though proper they gave birth to you. You are going to know. You are going to know. Right now you are fluffy because you're spoiled and you think God came and died for you so you can get a promotion as a senior manager in your company. That's what your, your, your little stupid pastors are teaching you. So as a result, in a little attitude, and you are like Panina. <clears throat> 
full of spite without realizing that like i said schrodinger's cat christians are like schrodinger's cat you can not afford to risk it with us because only when prophecy gets fulfilled can you then now <clears throat> are you now done for or when prophecy is obviously unfulfilled can you then actually succeed in your spite but if you get to the nth degree of confirming the of making an observation either of schrodinger's cat being dead or alive it's already too late so you have got to repent in the run-up too. Nineveh had to repent by just believing. Because you cannot please God without faith. You gotta just believe me. But you are too spiteful and you are narrow-minded. You are myopic in your view of the world. And so for those reasons, you keep on doing spells on me and then dissing me and then teasing me and then mocking me, making yourselves penina and therefore being observed by those who gauge my circumstance as ugly. You don't want to be called ugly women, but you are ugly when you persecute other women. You are hurting me for things that are completely out of my control, but they're not out of God's control. And that's the thing, Archie, that's always going to put you in an ugly little bunch, isn't it? You are menacing. I would richly recommend that you repent and do a better thing. If you don't want to repent, you don't gas to, but it comes highly recommended that you should. And the reason why it comes highly recommended is because I am Schrodinger's cat and absent of making an observation of my obviously failed prophecies, you are never safe. But at the juncture of confirming that my prophecies are true, you will definitely not be saved. At the safe, at that stage, it'll be too late. And the late coming point that I'm speaking to right now as Schrodinger's uncomfortable cat is the fact that the rapture is about to happen and you will be left behind. So confirmation of the fact that my content is going to get viewed by millions, if not billions of people is going to happen at a juncture and a place where it's already too late for you. You're already left behind. You're already humiliated. Like Nebuchadnezzar, you are already saying the nations of this world are accounted as nothing before God. No one can say to him, what have you done? It's already late. You're already being laughed at. I'm already in heaven. And you already have been left behind. And then for those that are passing away, calling my bluff, honey, I am not bluffing. Now I'm speaking to the men. Y'all men with your little Gorobela spells out here looking at me like I'm a psychic instead of a person coming with prophecy where Christ is concerned. I told you guys that Lord Hokafala, you're going to die. Largely the conglomerate of individuals that are out here passing away are men. They're like Ibrahim Raisi or Nasrallah. Mm. You are about to pass away, right? In accidents and all the like, but I've already shared such prophecies as those. You're going to leave me alone. Kalifu. But some of y'all are going to stay alive. And this is the prophecy that I am now giving today. I'm Schrodinger's cat and I'm telling you that I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I woke up from a dream where it is that one of these little ugly menacing Schrodinger's was opening a casket to see my body in it and it disappeared. Basically, there was some occult paraphernalia, some little ritual that they did that bombed on them, okay? Where it is that they went to go and look at the casket where they put what they would call an effigy representing me. They looked into that casket. It was like a little mini sized casket where they put an effigy representing me in it and the effigy was gone. Y'all know who you are. Y'all know you who you are, Carabella. Your little thing that you put inside a makeshift casket is gone supernaturally it disappeared the thing that represented my body that was chilling in a casket with me looking like i'm a, this is some kind of an open casket funeral where it's only a matter of time before i die your little effigy did effigy disappeared and the men that were looking at this it was two guys in particular looking into this casket to see if the little effigy spiritual effigy representing me is there <clears throat> they so got scared at this they got so scared when they gazed into this casket this little casket a little toy casket they got so scared when they saw that the effigy is gone that they immediately started looking around in the room to find it to see if somebody misplaced it to put it back but they had a thorough comprehension that it was gone supernaturally and yet did not repent you keep trying to kill me and i keep trying to conquer i'm not trying i keep prospering to conquer your spells and i keep saying i've got i'm gonna get raptured at the river jordan i'm like my man i'm gonna go in the sky for seven years come back looking like a baby because i'm gonna get raptured and get an incorruptible body y'all need to understand i am not passing away i'm getting raptured i say that over and over and over and over again that's how close to the end we are as for when the rapture is however that is not something i can confirm i'm not certain but this here is not going to end with me being dead it's going to end with me being raptured 
That is the prophecy. And you are all spiteful trying to kill me so that you can make an observation of the death of Schrodinger's cat. But if I stay alive, you are in a rock and a hard place because on the day that these prophecies get fulfilled, that's the day that you die. That's when fire and brimstone lands in Sodom. That's when the rain starts dripping goop, goop, goop in the days of Noah. That's when those of you who are predestined to pass away in your sins trying to kill a Christian will finally enter into eternity. And that is also the day when your regret is going to come at the place or at the juncture where Nebuchadnezzar's regret arrived. You will ultimately, those of you who remain alive, say of the woman that you called arrogant say of the woman that you called you think you're pretty but you're not say of the woman that you have mocked for not having a child at the age of 40 a husband blah blah whatever you are mocking that's out of my control right now you are then finally going to say yes like if we were dumb and the nations of this world were accounted as nothing before god and no one can say to jesus christ what have you done he chose karabo and i was wrong those of you who are, who remain will say that but this here is a prophecy now for those who remain Okay, some of y'all God wants to just humiliate the living daylights out of. You will never get saved, but you will be kept alive just for the sake of Uqlazwa. And then you will die. Some of y'all will stay alive because you are soil on the road to Damascus. I can't say that enough. You are, you are en route trying to kill Christians and then in your little feet get met by Christ and then you repent and you will be prolific in the tribulation running basically or spearheading revolutions and reformations and underground little missions to try and keep as many saints safe as you possibly can given that everybody out to be trying to behead you so hallelujah for those of you guys that do give god your lives finally given that you were such menaces in the run-up too okay others of you however will pass away so there are three categories here there are people who are going to die because you're being moved out the way lasagna in the run-up to the rapture, they gotta die. I already did a video. I'm not gonna uh, uh, unpack, right? Y'all are gonna have to check out my other interludes. Some of y'all are gonna die. So goodbye. Your attempt to confirm that Schrodinger's cat is dead is going to result rather in your death. Like the men around the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're gonna be out of perishing. You're gonna be the satraps and administrators thrown in the den of lions after Daniel's attempted murder failed. All right. Yeah, the, it, it, it eventually it ended up just that, an attempted murder. So some of y'all are going to die. You're going to perish, you're going to die. Like you're going to get into helicopters like Ibrahim Rahisi and not come back. You're going to have shelling all up in your backyard that's going to neutralize you. That's going to bomb your body out of the way. You are going to hell. I cannot tell you which among you are those except for the one wealthy tycoon man that's 21 years older than me. He's dying. The guy in America, he's lights out. My ex-boyfriend dying. Those are the only ones I can confirm. The rest of y'all, some of y'all like, let's save him. But you are going to enter into hell. There was a time when I got a vision, a dream. It was a vision rather of these two women and these two people, a man and a woman, sorry, ar arriving in hellfire. And there was this like giant beast encircling them. And they were shocked out of their minds that I was right. In other words, you confirm that Schrodinger's cat is still alive, but it's too late. It's too late and i didn't know these people and this was something that i got a month and a half ago to two months so the closer we get to that time the closer we arrive then at your demise so you can literally just keep trying to test the system and hope that this is not going to give but bottom line is you can never confirm that it gave or didn't give until it's too late you are in a rock and a hard place you gotta believe by faith you just gotta believe but you hate the cross and a wicked and a perverse generation they seek after a sign and god will not give you a sign other than the sign of jonah all you have is the gospel that's all you got the lord has a thing about moses and the prophets eh? mm. even with the with the rich man and lazarus story god did not send or abraham did not allow for the sending of uh, lazarus to this to the earth to warn the rich man's brothers because he said they have got moses and the prophets in other words you've got evangelism you've got faith that you are and they are we are trying to inspire faith in you faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god we're giving you the word of god if you don't believe your loss your loss you go to hell because you don't believe is that basic okay so those of you who die in the run-up to you will have been given quite a lot of energy to survive but you didn't okay and then there are those who the category of those who stay alive among them are those who are going to ultimately repent and then there are those who aren't going to repent they're just going to stay alive for the sake of being a humiliation and embarrassment just to end up in jail is zero that's what is going to become of you i can't tell you among you who is going to be that who is going to be beavers and butthead versus saul on the road to damascus all right uh so 
in this category of people who are not dying so there's these ones who are gonna die whatever that's their judgment wives mourn husbands mourn children mourn whatever these two that stay alive there is an additional judgment on top of you precisely because god knows that you are conceited and that if you stay alive to make an observation of the rapture happening especially this category who are just beavers and butthead they survive only to get humiliated and then they react with anger and irritation instead of repentance especially beavers and butthead this is what's going to finish you off this is what's going to be judgment so you can know that god got you you are going to lose loved ones and in particular children you are going to lose children these two you are going to lose children the one who is Saul on the road to Damascus is going to be humbled by the confirmation of prophecy when their kids die. I get it, you are insisting on being showed, on, on observing the death of Shodinga's cat. Well, you are going to get to the point where Shodinga's cat is confirmed alive when one of your children dies. And this here is also a, confer a person that's waiting for Shodinga's cat to make an observation. Their kids are also going to die, but the reactions are going to be different. The reaction of this person's kids dying is going to be more hatred against God but don't nobody care you're dying anyway to go and drain your dead kid in hell the reaction of this person is going to be like pharaohs in egypt let the people of god go it is going to be a contriteness but that lasts it lingers pharaoh was contrite uh, he let the people of god go and then later got angry again and fetched them at the red sea and then died there right but he got to a point where he was like i let them go because their god has judged me one group is going to react like pharaoh while the other group is going to insist on bashing their fists against god and then the tribulation is going to clobber them the lord is keeping these alive so that they can endure all the sorrow of the tribulation those beasts that eat away at people for five months where they will seek to find death and not be able they're going to get charged by that animal they're going to have asteroids fall and they're going to die in the tribulation is what i'm getting at either before taking the mark of the beast or not taking the there some of them will get to the point of taking the mark of the beast all these things will have been prophesied to on them over their lives and yet they will still nonetheless walk in it i told you guys that it's bizarre how people can have prophecy told them and yet nonetheless walk in that fulfillment of prophecy especially as a villain like judas was prophesied to be a villain against god and he's still went and became a villain these people are like these villains that have been predicted to be villains and they will just predictably be villains they will just be villains all the way to the end they have blasphemed the holy spirit so essentially they're going to be the ones that betray everybody that hand people over to the antichrist system that take the mark of the beast and they are going to be pursued by the plagues that pursue only those that don't have the seal of god on their foreheads so in um revelation is it 14 or the seven bowls of god's wrath which is revelation 15 i think i stand corrected they are going to be the ones who get loathsome swords on their bodies they're going to get scorched with great heat essentially all those plays that only fall on those people that have taken the mark of the beast they're going to endure them they're going to endure them so god is keeping them alive just so he can clobber them with the tribulation they're so evil that god is going to keep them alive to endure the sorrow of the tribulation and then go to hades i feel most sorry for these guys right i feel most bad for these i feel bad for these because they're going to hell immediately even before the rapture because they got to be moved out the way they're that ridiculous now these are kept alive just so god can wham them with the pen of the tribulation but these are kept alive so they can revolutionize a people in the tri tribulation these two both endure loss of children y'all are about to lose kids kids and by kids i mean the lord made it clear to me that the children who are going to pass away are going to be your favorite kids because y'all got the brazen audacity to have two favorite children it's going to be the kids who play the violin the piano the kids who are just straight a students uh in school it's going to be the kids that are you know everybody in the community thinks they're beautiful like daughters that are so beautiful so gorgeous that everywhere you go in the mall everybody's like ah oh, your daughter's so beautiful what's her name how old is she keep on knocking on your door doesn't she want to join little miss south africa doesn't she want to join and they're sticking it and uh, uh, what is this a science fair that like a kid that's like a, a parent's dream your daughter is or, or son is handsome intelligent athletic everybody loves them yeah those kids that are parents gems they're the ones that are dying i had a dream of a man 
boy like you know like what's what he can let it tell it it's a tanker base it like from the from like the the core mala what's what home who hobo like a, a core like crying like a dog like just a curdling scream coming from a man because he had just found out that his firstborn son died suddenly and i woke up from that dream on some bugger you were warned it's going to be favorite kids these parents are going to be left with bana that are always dropping the ball if at all they've got more than one child they are going to be left with the kid that's always failing the boy that's always impregnating every girl in the girl in the school they're going to be left with a junkie child that won't stop with the cocaine they're going to be left with banaba sokodisan the reason why this is the case the reason why the lord is going to take away their prized possessions and their gem children is because you will have taken away from the earth god's gems i told you guys that john is called in the scriptures the disciple that jesus loves the closer you are to god is written in god's word that draw near to god and he will draw near to you those of his saints who draw close to him he draws close to them they are the apple of his eye and he holds them dear so dear that he will literally isolate them in name calling and say of them you are the disciple that i have loved they are the prodigal they are the son that does not leave home they're not the prodigal they're the kid that's always just sitting right next to dad essentially they're the teacher's pet the ones that god is most pleased with are the most persecuted in these last days the servants of god that are that he is most pleased with are the ones that you have shadow banned you have tried to kill us you have maybe sometimes even truly killed us murdered us you have done so much against god's favorite kids the one who play the clarinet and the cello and the the bass guitar and the piano who also are a star math and science student who also keep on getting tapped on the shoulder off to go and study at all the universities of south africa and abroad the kid that is the captain of the rugby team the captain of the netball team the captain of the soccer team the captain of the debate team basically the the pride of people's like the pride in children that people have the kids that make parents really proud the ones that parents go out of their way to tell everybody at a meeting this is what my son and my daughter did the ones with all the photos and the trophies in the bedrooms on the walls of parents the ones who are the screen the screen um what do you call this the screen um saver of their parents the kid that gets the best praise I like parents are unfair the kid basically that is the favored one basically joseph you have killed god's joseph you have come for the sons and daughters of god that are the disciples that he loves the ones who draw near to him that never fall apart the ones who don't abandon the ones who don't leave the fort you have disenfranchised us you've taken away our jobs you have made sure we can't graduate from university we were supposed to be gifts to the earth fill it and occupy it we were supposed to make for great wives and great moms and great dads and whatever's we were supposed to do stuff and you stood in the way and you blocked our prospects and therefore the glory that god would have gained out of us filling the earth and occupying it with him being like look at my son go look at my daughter go i was supposed to be something of an ambassador for the cross on earth and you blocked me and i'm not the only one you have taken away god's baddest saints in the game and you have put them in obscurity and squalor put them underground and try to rape them you have made his daughter fear men you have tried to rape his daughters and you have disenfranchised his sons making it hard for them to take wives because they don't have money you have taken some of the best sons and daughters of god and just laying them waste at poverty's doorstep and god was like because you took the apple of my eye because you grabbed my prodigal you because you grabbed my son and my daughter that weren't prodigals they never left home they were always chilling with me and even in these freezing conditions they said naked i came into this world naked shall i leave god gave now god has taken away blessed be the name of the lord even in sorrow and persecution they never left because you went and messed with that apple of my eye i'm going to take the apples of y'all's eyes the lord is about to take your favorite sons and your favorite daughters let me finish this message outside i need to pee what's up i'm outside taking a walk as usual and I'm wearing a jacket because why about that um who's a shoe by y'all uh listen all right before I, I finish saying this prophecy let me just highlight this one factor ne 
Prophecy is never there for the purpose of finality in Jethela, that's it. Barely ever does it get shared. I mean, yes, there are prophecies that are given that tell of what is inevitably going to happen. Inevitably. Like, for instance, the book of Revelation is an inevitable type prophecy, right? Um, but there are prophecies that are given for the purpose of causing repentance. They don't have to happen. Like the prophecy that Jonah gave over Nineveh. Do you understand? If at all you prophesy over a people and you are prophesying destruction and they repent, it doesn't have to end that way. It does not have to end like that. So this here message is rather the, like the prophecy to Nineveh. It is, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> it is rather, <coughs> I just choked on my own spit. It's rather like the prophecy to Nineveh instead of the prophecy of Rev, the book of Rev, in fact, if anything is two-pronged it's multi-pronged there is nothing that can ever block the rapture there is nothing that can ever prevent the end of the world coupled with the fact that the beginning and the end is determined that date cannot shift on the left and on the right on the barometer at all nothing can stop it from coming and nothing can delay it these things however have been foreseen by god in advance and written down on paper to give us understanding so it is possible to delay God's wrath by repenting but that delay of God's wrath is not so much a change in the prophetic timeline it evidences the climate of man's reachability that it is still in operation and when we give prophecy despite the fact that it's literally the end of the world and we can see it as Christians there is always an inkling of hope in us that we are not at the end of the end of the end of the end just somewhere very close to it because it's always God's first price for repentance the Lord does not delight in the death of him who dieth he does not delight in the death of the wicked so it is always first price for God to give a shot, a chance, an opportunity to people to do better. It's always number one to rather repent for people instead of judgment. The Lord prefers mercy over judgment because he is what we call magnanimous. When you are magnanimous, when you are magnanimous, you are powerful and in a position to utterly decimate and destroy that which is a hindrance to the thing you're doing or an affront to who you are. But choose not to because these people find themselves at such mercy at your feet that you could crush them, but you just don't. You rather award them grace. That grace, however, in magnanimity is not awarded unless it is sought. That grace will not be given freely out like Smarties at a food drive. It is going to be awarded to whomever asks for it. So essentially you have to arrive at a place of humility to recognize that you're in dire need of magnanimity. Otherwise, if you are arrogant in the climate of a magnanimous authority figure, this authority figure, albeit being full of mercy and magnanimity, will not give it to you. Essentially, it is a confirmation of scripture where it is written that humility comes before honor and pride before a fall and also that God resists the proud. So therefore, if at all you're going to tap into his magnanimity, you have to humble yourself and seek it out. He's not merely going to give it to you. There is this false belief running around in the streets that God will forgive all sins. No, he won't. He will only forgive the sins of those who ask him for it. You have actually got to humble yourself to recognize you're in dire need of salvation, dire need of propitiation and justification. And so therefore, in that humility, you will then be awarded it, following which you will be given the Holy Spirit who will give you new affections. He will give you new passions. He will make you hate that which God hates, love that which God loves. He will put a new spirit in you. He will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. He will take out your heart of flesh and give you a, your heart of stone and give you a heart of a flesh. So your affections upon being changed will then automatically cause you to despise your former life. So it's not going to be that rough for you to walk away from wickedness because of the fact that his yoke is easy, his burden is light. So God is going to make it nice and possible for you to resent that which you now today can't fathom walking away from. You can't fathom it because you are yet to have the Spirit of God. And the things of God are foolishness to the man who is perishing. But once you have humbled yourself to God, you will 
naturally delight in that which God will have you delight in because you're given a new nature. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, now all things have become new. The Holy Spirit has moved in and so now you are grieved by sin instead of merely delighting in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But in order to get to that place where it is that magnanimity is now applying, and the grace of God is being given you rather than judgment, you've got to actually humble yourself to the recognition of the fact that you are whack. The sorry and uncomfortable thing about whack people who are terrible is it's really hard to get to that point and also to let stuff go. Like when you are holding people hostage because you feel entitled to them, like with witchcraft, it is your idolatry over your incarceration and your hostage taking of innocent people that cause you to struggle to let them go even if it will rescue your souls you send yourselves to hell because you want to be god you send yourselves to hell because you want to be able to literally chart the course of people's destinies and determine where they will move your megalomaniacal disposition sends you to hell because you don't want to let people live for you it is about the prospect of observing the prosperity of Carabo that grates you it eats you whole like a pineapple do you understand what i'm saying just the prospect of me being happy in love for instance with a man is such a consuming parasite in the bodies of some of y'all that rather than let it happen i'm sorry god will always resist the proud do you understand what i'm saying so you basically have to arrive at a place where you are now mature enough to take in your stride the observation of your failures as an occult practitioner that is the hard thing that is the rough thing the hard thing is to realize that a life of controlling other people is going to send you to hell and it's not worth it but when you are maintaining a megalomaniacalism where you still want to hold on to god's people because you are the pharaoh of egypt the pharaoh of moses on that day, you are going to send yourself to the flames of hell having been given such poignant warnings as these. You will insist that over my dead body before I will ever allow Karabu to get married. As if though that is in your prerogative to make that decision. Over my dead body before I will let her be happy. Over my dead body before I will watch her. But basically people are saying to themselves, Except here in the deal, I'm not even under anybody's clutch or control. You are under the clutch and control of Satan. And the only reason why God has given you so much time is for your mercy. He has given you mercy so that you can repent because when he decides to pour out his judgment it will be final it will be sudden there will be no warning in advancing as you will have had so much of it in the run-up too and you will suddenly arrive in the abyss or suddenly endure the loss of a child like i've just highlighted right now having been severely stubborn in the run-up too you will have been treacherously stubborn in the run-up too and that stubbornness you would have been very uncomfortable with it you would have been extremely disquieted your gut feeling would have been speaking volumes to you but then you would have made a decision to rather ignore it do you understand what i'm saying your megalomaniacalism over other people i don't know why you don't take introspection sit down on a couch with a pad and write down why it is that you are so crazy controlling of people and what you would feel if somebody made a decision to basically chart the course of your life hmm? if somebody made a decision to determine who you're gonna marry if some silly woman that you don't even like in the office that you think has a big head you are unattracted to her made a decision that you're going to be her husband and then invest all of her might in witchcraft to make that true would you not be mad out of your mind angry while some of y'all i consider the gobble I, I i loathe you i despise the works that you partake in in the occult and yet you have determined to make me in the morning like the way that jacob woke up next to leah that's what you're trying to do i find you just as menacing as some of the women in these streets that have a crush on you and are flirting with you in the office the way that that's how i feel think about the one woman that has always been chasing you up and down flirting with you like no man's business that you thought that keeps on flirting with you just imagine that that's how i feel about you 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 might have delusions of grandeur concerning who you think you are you might imagine that you're fantastic and amazing and that you can inspire feelings in a woman but once a person considers you disgusting there's nothing you can do and some of y'all got some females in these streets out here tailing you tailing you 
that you find disgusting and you just can't get rid of her, of her fast enough. She's a little Lynn Whitfield in thin line between love and hate. A stocky, creepy female. high and low. You would be up in arms with, with a great deal of upset. If Le Cherry Lena invested in sorcery where you're concerned and yet you don't think Uguti is problematic that you're doing the same thing to, to me. You see, when you put those shoes on your own feet, that's a thing. When you put those shoes on your own feet, you realize and you feel like just what menaces to the society you are. Anyway, I'm getting back to the point. These prophecies are both from the vantage point of being final like the book of Revelation, nothing can change it, but also the, the Lord can stay his hand from his wrath insofar as you repent. It's a combination, a two-pronged ap approach. The last days have been lost days for a very long amount of time. And while it's ideal that this should be delayed for the sake of your repentance, it's also not ideal for Christians on the other side of this ideology to be maintained in so much sorrow. And at some point, there comes a time when there's too much... That's a funny sounding car. When there's too much sadness, there comes a time when there is too much sadness in the body of Christ for God to keep on giving you mercy. He is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that anybody should perish, but that also come to a knowledge of him. A day is as 1,000 years to him and 1,000 years as a day. That's a whole total thing. We get it. However, the Lord is not just, he's not going to stand back and, and basically gather dust in heaven, watching his church reeling and writhing for your sake much longer. His magnanimity reaches an nth degree and a finality. And in order to um, exploit the magnanimity, you actually have to humble yourself. Just because he is magnanimous and forgiving doesn't mean he has to. Do you understand what I'm saying? You actually have to seek that forgiveness out. And to get there, like I said earlier, you need to reach a place of humility and also a place of letting people go. You just gotta drop the magic wand. Just like Pharaoh let peop, God's people go. But I am imploring you to do it gently so that there is limited damage to your person. Now, in going back to the prophecies that I gave, like I said, these things don't gotta happen. You don't have to lose your children. You don't even have to lose your own lives. This is not a final word gavel dropped like a death sentence on death row. You be Aja passing away on the 30th of September 2026 as it is determined by the state that you're living in or the province of the country. It is not a done deal. It is a preliminary sentence, a judgment that is being passed to you in the season of re rehabilitation of which, in the season of probation of which, if you walk in good behavior, you could get away with time served instead of a death penalty. I'm trying to say to you, if you love name Pilozenu, if you want to maintain some kind of semblance of peace in your lives, and also if you want to make the rapture. You see, these people that I'm preaching to, some of them are gonna die, and then others are going to stay alive only to endure the tribulation of Do you understand? And then others are going to repent, but not first before losing something very precious to them. All three groups don't gotta go out like that all three groups these ones if they repent they will not die and they will of course go in the sky with us at the rapture if these repent they will stay alive just as the lord intended to keep them alive just for the sake of Ukbat Lapa. but instead of Ukbat Lapa in the tribulation he will take them to heaven that they might watch the hunger games with the rest of us because they will be raptured saints and these don't have to endure the loss of children and they will also get raptured at the date of the, of the rapture. The rapture is happening. The tribulation is happening. It is inevitable. The date of it has been determined already from eternity past. So there is no, you know, sending out that goalpost later or bringing it in. It has happened. But all the events in the run-up too that providentially will unfold, do you understand? Involve these processes of trying to snatch people out from the flames to gather numbers for heaven to gather people who are going to be watching the Hunger Games and to also prevent people or stay people or save people from being finished off either before the rapture or during the tribulation etc. It's always fueled with a message of redemption this whole thing This whole thing will always come with a message of redemption. So Going back then to giving the prophecies concerning the the prophecies concerning the train that are gonna die. You will literally, if you don't repent, these two that remain, Laba, they're going to be the ones mourned in their households, right? Um, and so bye-bye. These two are the ones that I'm actually particularly talking to. 
You have taken away God's apples of his eye or their efficacy on earth. You have kicked some of them back to heaven by martyring them. And you have made sure that some of us who are still down here in these earthly streets cannot do what we're supposed to do. I've got a job and it's big. There is a prolific message I am giving, and yet I'm getting no views on YouTube. Ones and zeros binary code. I will ultimately get viewed by, like I said, millions of people, and some of my videos will even go into the billions. My shorts are going to break the internet. Do you understand? That is inevitably going to happen. However, in the run up too, there are people that could get reached by my content, such that even though my content will get viewed by millions of people, there is no way I'm ever going to get viewed by millions of people before the rapture. Even if YouTube let me go. Even if they were to let me go and fly like a bird like Nelly Furtado. Even if that were to be a thing. There's never going to come a time when with the kind of message that I have, with the kind of ministry that I have, and with the kind of taboo that I have, that I will ever be loved by the world. John 15, they will always despise me. So whoever watches my content, will, they will among the audiences of people that watch my content, will be a handsome amount, in, in definitely, inevitably, sorry, that will just hate what I have to say. That will not have, that will be naysayers and determined to disprove me. That's why I don't even have comments open. Even when I was still growing on YouTube, I did not want to hear what people had to say because the message that I speak is taboo. That's just the nature of prophets. They're unsung. Prophets are, or people who give prophecy. Let me not call myself a prophet. Let me say people who give prophecy. Um, they're like musicians who pass away unsung or artists who pass away unsung. They paint a painting and everybody just kind of walks by them and ignores them and then they die and next thing they are just selling millions of copies uh, again prophets are like that or people who give prophecy their prophecies are so despised people have just historically so hated prophecy that they have only ever sung the praises of the prophet once the prophet has died that's just the way that it is and that's the way that it's going to stay it's literally going to keep with that indefinitely oh Kimojara thing wi-fi is actually catching anyway whatever uh, yeah again people will constantly and persistently and consistently hate prophesyings all the way up until the end so much so do they hate prophesyings that they had to be implored and admonished in the scriptures to not despise prophesyings it's always going to be a thing so with the kind of ministry that i have i will never be loved because i don't never mind scratch itching ears but People in the last days will not endure sound doctrine. Neither are they do they like a very rebukey ministry. They don't like rebukey ministries. They will always find an excuse to explain away the person with a very harsh um, message to give. Coupled with the fact that even if I were to be let go, I will never be too let go. Because there will always be some kind of determination to control the narrative of what is being shared out there by social media platforms. So even if YouTube let me go, they would not let me go freely. 100%. They would never let me soar like a bird. There will, there will always be restrictions on truth channels to a certain extent. They will always grow at a snail's pace in comparison to many other channels. They will never grow like a travel channel. They will never grow. And if a Christian is growing like a travel channel, hmm, just be scared. Be low-key nervous of them. If a Christian is actually moving from 1,000 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers in two days, be careful. If, if you look at a Christian, if a Christian is growing from like, if this month they've got 10,000 subscribers and in two months they're sitting on 400,000 subscribers, be careful. I don't know how many such Christians the Lord has shown me have signed their deals over to the devil. Like they have signed, they've done some ritual in order to get numbers like the kind of ritual that you would do for to fill up a church uh, as a pastor so you end up like a little bit of a prophet lovey they have done rituals like that like those in order to get viewers on youtube so when a christian grows from 20,000 subscribers to literally 500,000 subscribers in like four months be nervous be scared there's something likely that they are doing not all the time but it's like that christian channels grow gently gradually they grow like like dough in the oven it's not fast it, it it's you see the growth but it's not feverish it's not effervescent like you will have a christian be on like if they are at 50,000 subscribers maybe next year they'll be on 60,000 subscribers and then the year thereafter they'll be on 70,000 subscribers it takes years for them to get to where they need to get so if a christian in just a space of two months or two years is already sitting on almost 1 million subscribers be careful of them almost every last one of such christian that i have followed online that i have watched online god has told me stop watching this person they're not mine they have compromised and have settled the reason why that's the case is because every so often in content creation spaces 
uh, there will be these bodies, especially when you're living in the United States of America, that will invite you to some strange little ditty looking party uh, because you are already an influencer, because they realize that now Hollywood and the entertainment industry is not the only place that's actually influencing people through media. Now they see that now content creators are the new A-list celebrities. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now they're getting recruited from right inside their own backyards because their YouTube channels are starting to catch kind of like any kind of traction or any kind of fire. They will then invite them to this meeting and it'll be esoteric. It'll be, um, what do you call this? It'll be um, spiritual, uh, but not godly. Do you understand? Satanic, essentially the stuff of the Illuminati or whatever. It'll be satanic and the stuff of the Illuminati or whatever. And, um, and these Christians, these these invitations tend to, they don't care if you're Christian. They don't care if you are a food content creator, a mug banger. They don't care if you're a clothing fashion, whatever it is that you might be doing online. They just care about the fact that you're catching traction and they will invite you. And some of the people getting invited to these meetings are Christians and they've got a prerogative to say, I serve only Jesus. At these meetings, they're made to recant the Bible, rescind whatever they believe. However, they're, say, they're, told, they're told that because your content is religious in particular, you can maintain a facade of being a Christian even though you're not you really are actually under us and you will find that these people after just a, a couple of months of being online they will suddenly have that tick next to them in other words they've been verified so YouTube lets them thrive and grow to a point even of verification and many other social media platforms they've signed their souls over do you understand you you will be able to spot them very quickly some of them are even already started starting to this one this one i do this one eye symbolism in their thumbnails and what have you because they've unleashed to some other kingdom however they are doing gospel content so do not be deceived by every last big like christian content creator that has grown in just five months from just fifty thousand subscribers to almost a million in just five months be careful all I'm saying is be careful. You know who they are. Ain't no need to call anybody else, uh, anybody out for it. They can still uh, repent. They can, uh, you know, but in order for them to repent, they would have to confess what they did. And they would have to also lose everything. So they're like now a rich man who it's easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for them to enter the kingdom of heaven. They've put themselves in a position to have a very hard time repenting, but they can still repent. Uh, but like I said, in order for them to repent, they'd have to say that this is what I did and they will lose the trust of the whole body of Christ. So it's a whole feat. Okay, cool. Now that we have um, put that out there, allow me to just communicate that there is never ever going to come a day when any real, true, genuine child of the living God, especially when they've got a prophetic message, will ever be like grow feverishly on social media because the world hates disciples. We will only ever grow gently, gently, like gently, like you will get to 50,000 subscribers after four years. Okay, you will get to 70,000 subscribers after say, seven years on YouTube. It'll be gentle. And if at all you're really like pushing, uh, using all different kinds of marketing strategies and hiring SEO experts and also hiring, um, uh, what do you call this? Using TikTok in order to you know, bring people over to a YouTube channel and all that jazz. If you're doing that, maybe you might grow slightly faster than the regular man on the street because you're using extra tools to help your, your agenda along. But even with that kind of assistance, you are never going to grow as fast as a mukbang channel or some person who does conspiracy theories or some person that is completely worldly carnal, somebody that does a gossip channel, someone that does all these other worldly channels, travel, like fashion, you getting hair, you know, you, you are never gonna grow at that height. You are never ever you are never ever gonna go viral as a Christian um, on social media overnight it's just not gonna happen yeah you like it's literally just never ever ever gonna happen you're never ever gonna get so viral that you will have a million subscribers in just a year if that has happened something has pushed you not all the time but some of the time and okay not all of the time but most of the time Christian content creators that grow ridiculously like they are Russell Brand be careful. Literally almost every last one of the ones that I used to follow, God has exposed them. All the big content creators that are Christian, that I do follow, that have got over 500,000 subscribers have been on YouTube for 15 years. They've been on YouTube for 20 years. Like basically when YouTube started, that's when they started. And so that's why I trust them. But uh, uh, some of them are like literally just two years old and yet they're already sitting on 1.5 million subscribers. Just be careful. Of such content uh, creators okay but like I said not all of them some now let's move on all right yeah so I would never ever get to a place Mina as Carabo where even though I was allowed to fly like a bird where I would ever have a million subscribers in just three years it would take 20 years if that's how much time we still have left because that's how long it takes for Christians to grow online it's snail paced 
it is that, that's how long organic growth is for a Christian it's snail paste and it you know people have to be, get accustomed to you they grow hanyani 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 that's how it is but you you will find however that the feverish growth of Christian content creators tends to also come in spaces that are fake so false disciples like false shepherds like false evangelists and like your Creflo dollars and your Kenneth Copeland's such channels and channels of people giving you comforting words and pampering stuff without any real true meat they also grow fast but the ones who are telling you the real deal are resisted by human beings and they're also resisted by social media we are resisted to a point of shadow banning as to a certain extent now in terms of shadow banning there are degrees of shadow banning i'm certain of it because i've been shadow banned in different fashions in the past there are this like the extremity of shadow banning that i'm enduring now where it is that literally nobody's looking at me and they've also taken away my uh, advanced features only my subscribers can look at me but there are other versions of shadow banning where they restrict traffic or they will age restrict your content or they will recommend you to only certain people or they will show your videos down there in the search box instead of like um, uh, showing uppermost they they are layers they are layers they are like rungs I don't know what they call them at these YouTube streets or wherever uh, in Facebook but there are levels and depending on how they feel about you they will then put you on the level of shadow banning I am presently sitting on the worst level of shadow banning in the world on all my social media and the only place I'm now uploading is on YouTube, right? And of course, Twitter. Twitter is the only place that has not shadow banned me at all, okay? Uh, but on YouTube, I am at the worst level of shadow banning, like the worst. And then I've been closed with no one but my subscribers. Like, uh, yeah, it's the worst of the worst. And that is because of some favor that was pulled in. If this favor was removed, if this favor was like taken off, right? And this person repents, I would have basically recovery to my channel growth that I used to have before where I've got every so often 500 views on a video every so often 700 views on a video every so often 200 views on a video and my shorts can sometimes get 7,000 views type thing it'll go back to that but I will never despite how good any of my content is get to a point where I'm literally just getting ridiculously viral like a million views like for instance there was a time when I uploaded a, a short on YouTube about two years ago I uploaded a short and within the first minute I was already sitting on, on like something like 500 uh, views for that short I was so excited and I was jumping up and down on the spot that yo this is gonna go viral because in, in just one minute I've gotten 500 views after two minutes I stopped growing I, 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 I got up to 1200 views and then I stopped the next morning when I checked it, I was sitting on maybe like 2,500 views. And then the next morning after that, it was stuck on 2,500. Essentially, when you are a truth channel, when something of yours starts to go viral, it's like there is an alarm, beep, 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 that goes off on YouTube and they're like, stop it, stop it, stop it. And then they stop recommending your stuff and so it stops getting traffic. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that I will never get to a point where I am viral ever in the run up to the rapture, but I can have more reach than my, what I presently have. And that reach can be caused by the repentance of some people. In that I will go back to getting my 400 views for a video, 500 views for a video, and 7,000 views for a short, and me growing my subscribers back again. But I will never be viral. That will reach some people for Christ. It'll take some from the flames. It'll take some, never mind from the flames, but from the rapture. I will succeed to reach some people. I will succeed to cause the repentance of a remnant do you understand before the rapture happens but when things are maintained in this state right now that i am in ain't nobody out here getting reached by me except for these lackluster psychopaths in the occult that are rotant consuming my content alone not sharing it with anybody else they're the only ones watching me only ones listening to my content and with them being the only ones listening are therefore blocking the message of peace from reaching however many two three five extra people that i could reach and it's these that I'm trying to appeal to, that I'm showing her in a cat. I'm, I'm showing this cat in a box. I'm not dying and I'm telling you I'm not dying. You, however, keep on doing dead spells on me. Top of that, you have sat on my chest a YouTube, making sure that other people cannot listen to me successfully. If you don't repent, either way, I'm getting my millions and my billions of views after the rapture. But just by mere virtue of the fact that you will have blocked people from listening to me in the run-up too. That is your, the end of you. You are the ones that are facing death or humiliation staying alive and to be clapped by the tribulation. And those who stay alive, you are going to lose children. 
You have got to leave me alone to continue to grow on this side of the rapture. And if you don't, it's okay. Either way, I'm still going to get viewed once the rapture happened, happens at a prolific level because people are going to let go of their biases and their doubts once the rapture has happened. And that's what's going to cause the reception of the gospel a lot easier once the tribulation has commenced. Right now, people are still stubborn. There's an evil spirit of antichrist operating. It'll be removed off the minds of some people by the rapture. So basically, Thomas, who is now going to see the holes in the hands of Jesus Christ, is going to repent because he saw the rapture. So that's what's going to cause a revival and that's what's going to cause the blowing up of certain Christian content, right? In the run-up to we are only going to be, you know, organically growing very slowly on social media. We're going to be growing very, very slowly and quite organically too, right? So with that being then a whole thing, all that I can say at, at this particular moment is you've got the option, you could repent that now and give me back my channel or not, really. You don't have to. It does not have to happen that way. It however comes highly recommended that it should. For your sake and not so much mine. I'm not pleading for myself here because either way I'm gonna be set free. But you see, that's the thing. Y'all think Schrodinger's cat is arrogant to say stuff like that until it gets observably proven that they were right. So it is long story short in everybody's best interests to just leave us alone as the body of Christ. Mar, those of y'all who are going to lose children, get chelo kare, etlo ba your favorite kids, nangkuta. It's going to be, we say, who busy mo, and akela nuten mo kaking kabo busy bate. It's going to be by nabalona that are your most beloved, the ones over whom you are most besotted, the ones that you are not estranged from, the ones that are the goody two shoes, the ones that are always batasodi jana, the ones that are always picking up after everybody's heavy dirt, the ones that are always correcting a circumstance, the kids that are always passing in school, and the kids that are always batong traka ina na yang 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 me in gets a very uncomfortable. I get halo hangi or why monto as lo wile down abo tukuso. Okay, it's the kids that everybody loves. Okay, not just you. It's everybody's pet child that annoys all the other siblings. The responsible kid that's always home on time, studying. And the one that is going to fly overseas next year to start studying at an international university because they got a scholarship. And they're going to die before they get there. I'm trying to help people understand what is coming and the reason why the Lord is going to take these children away is because those kids are the representation on earth of some of his disciples on earth. Those kids are like us. They're like his favorite saints. God is not a respecter of persons and he does not show favoritism to anybody. But if you draw near to God, he draws near to you. Essentially the disciple that Jesus Christ loves, John. The one that writes the book of Revelation at Patmos. You've killed us. You have gone on right ahead and taken away the apples of his eye. You have gone on right ahead to extract from society the daughters and the sons of God with the biggest and most prolific missions and with the most agreeable spirit to do the work of God. The ones that don't stutter and hesitate. Like you know how Moses hesitated and his wife Zipporah had to stand in the gap by circumcising the son so God does not strike him dead? Yeah. We are the ones that don't stutter. We're the ones that don't hesitate. We're the ones that don't reject Christ three times before the rooster crows. We're the ones that stay sutured to his hip. We're Joseph that stays faithful to God in Egypt in spite of sorrow. We are Job that a very fortuitous, uh, what is this, full of, um, not fortuity, what I wanted to say was, um, the word that I'm looking for, I'm distracted. Why is this person just chilling in the middle of the road? Okay. Uh, fortitude. Yes. That's what I wanted to say. No, not fortitude. It is for, yes, fortitude. Thank you. Uh, the ones who have a fortitude in sorrow, who hold on to God in spite of whatever is slapping them. Not every Christian is like that. Did I say what I'm saying? But the closer you are to God, the more persecuted by Satan and his minions you are. And it is the destruction and the calamitizing of such saints as these 
that is going to cause God to take from your own backyards the apples of your eyes. God is going to take away your straight A students. He is going to take away your He is going to take away your star athlete kids. He is going to take away the kids with the scholarships, the kids that everybody loves, the beautiful girl that's going to become Miss South Africa. The one that everybody is like, yo, I, ca I can't believe that you were able to make such a beautiful baby sing as when I want a link. Yeah, the kids that every the kids that are basically the envy of other parents on some yo, um, tanaga karabo, or um, tanaga tepiso, or um, tanaga gaga gas 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 tembiso, gapegi, um, tanaga little honolo. Muse for two year funda, Muse about to Uyo, we overseas next year, Uyo funda, a Harvard. Those kids, God is going to take them out, and their deaths, their blood is going to be on your hands because it is God's way of showing you that you don't get to take away my little straight A student's child, you don't get to take away my star athlete child, my pretty girl that would have gotten married very beautifully to a man that was going to dote over her. Those are y'all who stole my husband and my youthful wedding when I was just in my 20s. That the glory of my wedding, the, the money that would have been paid for my lobola, my graduation, the celebration of that day, all that which are the milestones on earth that I by now at the age of 40 was supposed to walk in but I didn't. You took them all away and I was supposed to glorify God at all those junctures, at my graduation, at my wedding, first child, all that jazz. I was supposed to glorify God and I never got an opportunity. If anything, I've just rather been sharing a testimony of persecution the entire time. You took that away from God on earth and so he's going to take away your opportunity to and your sons, the sons that will have made you the proud dad at South Africa's World Cup final where we win some kind of a, a, a soccer match because they are the captain of that team. The kids that would have been Miss South Africa and you being a doting mom, a proud parent on some, that's my daughter, raised her well and everybody look at you on some, who? Your daughter looks like you mama, I can see where she got her looks. You have, you, you literally, the, 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 every milestone that a parent has with, where, where, where their child succeeds and goes from strength to strength you stripped that away from God with his disciples and God is now going to take it away from you. He's going to take away your little Miss South Africans. Do you understand? He is going to take away your little Igdumelen Kunes. He's going to take away your Elon Musks. He's going to take away your Tylers. He's going to take away those kids of yours that are going to one day cause parents to be like, that's my kid. I raised well. Yeah, because you took that away from God. That's what you did. This is a warning and a poignant one. It doesn't have to end this way. But thoroughly comprehend that mean like Karabos is a girl one. The thing that I am Nyangbon. Look at all this gaze at it Nimu Shagabi. You stole me from all the glory that can come with a woman with the suite of talents, giftedness, and glory that I've got. The Lord is not gonna just stand back and let you continue to do that. You took his best disciples off the streets and you put them in chain. So now he's gonna take the best of your children off these streets. And also put them in chains. You put me in the chains of persecution. Your kids are going to be put in the chains of hell. Because they belong to you. They don't know God. And so when they die they will go to hell. This is what is coming. This is a hard prophecy. But it's true. And if you don't repent. It's going to come to pass. And when it does. When you are mourning over the body of your dead son. That got knocked over by a car. You are going to remember every last word I said. And when it happens, it'll be four months from now. And you will have had all that time to repent, but didn't. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. I hope you repent. Peace.